God has already demonstrated. Yes. Hallelujah. So, amen. It doesn't require a whole lot to be preached today. I was sitting down talking yesterday. I'm watching how this year have almost came to an end. When I thought that surely I wouldn't have been able to make it through this entire year. Now you still have your moments yeah. when you don't have either one of your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially during Christmas time we normally be at their houses. Yeah. All of us. And we wait at daddy to do the prayer for breakfast. Yeah. He's the only man I know they going to make you get happy before you eat breakfast. Because he's going to pray into heaven. He in, he fall in. Yes, you can tell when he shows up in heaven. Because he's not saving his prayer. <laughs> Literally, he'll be in a tomb. And the heavens are falling in there for Amen. breakfast. Amen. We'll be in there speaking in tongues. Right. And I know they'll be ready to eat. But honey, go with them for the And then this Christmas, we don't have either one of them. But tell somebody, I do got a heavenly father. <laughs> that knows all. That knows all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing he has allowed us to do, yes. he has restored the James family. Yes. 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 I'm going to give this testimony before I go into my scripture. Our family was at odds. Literally. As noted as we are. We stop speaking to each other as anointed <coughs> as we are. The enemy had us, in a sense, you know, there's a thin line between love and hate. It had got to the point where we didn't know whether or not we loved each other or hate each other. We didn't even like to be in each other's presence. Uh, if one came, as a certain person came around, it just vexed a lot of people's spirit. It just, just it was just, it was to a point where you just sit back and say, "This surely this cannot be my family." Because one thing my daddy told us: go to Romans. While I'm giving my testimony, let's go to Romans eight. I'm not gonna read the scripture you think I'm gonna read, but go to Romans eight. Um, my daddy, if, if he thought, if he got wind Talk about it. of us Say that. arguing, fussing, fighting, he would literally, I don't care how grown you were, uh -huh. one thing he didn't do, he didn't play family, fighting, or at a disagreement. He taught us how to love. Amen. It was so crazy that in ministries, that we went to, the bond was so thick that we had pastors fight against the bond that we had. That's right. That's right. They were telling people, if you see them sitting together, yeah, separate. Separate. separate them. Yeah. Right. They didn't like the fact that because if you did one to one, yeah. you did it to all. Yeah. So they had issues. With the bond. I'm, I'm going somewhere. We already have some money. And when my mother passed, you know, we had made her promise on her deathbed <clears throat> that we was going to get this thing together. And there was even time she told us, she said, they still ain't got it together. I don't care how much we came around that bed and sung to her, she still knew we was not together. She didn't close her eyes until she felt in her spirit that her children had got themselves together. Can I help you? And then my daddy died. And it took us back to square one. Yeah. It was worse than it was before my mama passed. Norton, singing, shining, preaching, but had issues. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm going to tell you what God will do. I began to pray 
I said, Lord, I don't know what to say, don't know what to do. Because the person that was kind of like the head of all the, you know, people thought I was in, in agreement. And I ain't never in agreement with nobody foolishness. I don't care how close we are. I ain't gonna be in no foolishness. But it got so bad. We got legal involved. Hear me. Legal lawyers, everything involved. And I said, now Lord, I know mommy and daddy both probably rolling because of where we are. But tell somebody, prayer changes a whole lot of things. After communicating with a couple of them, and, and, and we were all basically feeling the same way, we don't even know how we got here. Amen. God fixed it. Now that's a fight. That's been a fight. When I tell you that's been a fight, because what we was trying to do, we was trying to come together upon the one roof to celebrate Christmas together. Every house <laughs> that we rented, put money on, and even the last one, they took the money but canceled a reservation. Wow. Because the enemy understands if I allow them to get together up on the wrong Come on, I'll talk, I'll talk. Come on. Before 2018 leaves, Say that, Pastor. there ain't nothing he can do with them in 2019. Yeah. So I talked again, man, on Monday. She had me crying, 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 crying. Because they took her money and canceled her reservation. But tell somebody, but God. But God. God fixed it to give us a whole other house. Beautiful, too. To where we're now being able, everything is locked in, and we'll be able to celebrate Christmas together. One of my siblings. Yes, sir. My brother's having, he just had surgery on Thursday. Yes. But he told them he don't care about surgery. He will be in Atlanta for Christmas. Yes. Yes. And I said all that to say this. Anytime that God is here ready to fix, restore, uh -huh. heal, uh -huh. deliver, uh -huh. or set free, yes. you can expect adversity. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. Because he understands there's power in agreement. He understands there's power when you come together and unify. If he can keep us divided, not just in your natural family, but if he can keep your spiritual family divided, he understands that a house that is divided will not stand. So any time that the enemy has got you looking at your leaders, not necessarily your pastors or your apostles, but looking at your, your the members, your 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 constituents in the gospel, looking at them cockeyed and crazy over stuff that they heard, then there's an indication that the yeah. enemy know if I can just ever get them together. Come on, now. Well, I'm getting ready to cause havoc to the kingdom. Come on. Now. Just he'll, he'll never want you to get together. So I was happened to run into an individual who fits on my own yesterday. And I had already told somebody they better not say nothing to me because I have nothing to say to them. Because when you've been good to people when you've given people your time, when you're praying, you've labored. You don't lost both of your parents, but they still got you in the seat for theirs. For you to listen to a lie about your leader. And you hold on to the lie for two years oh, and still can't come clean about the lie. But I know about the lie because your sibling told me about the lie that they said against your leader. So what you did was you call yourself innocent 
leaving the ministry, still lying about the lie that was told to you about your leader. But can I can I say this? The person that in a sense told you the lie does not restore a relationship with me. Okay. Then I work out. You still you still were out here acting like you have issues with your leader, but I just tell people they're not a member, they just attend every now and then. Let's go to Romans. I said all that to say this. Don't leave 2018 holding grudges. Don't leave 2018 with any unforgiveness in your heart. Because if you exit 2018, you're going to enter 2019 the same way. The Bible says if you have an alt against your brother, but never say this. So some of y'all won't get y'all finished here. If you have an alt against me, there's a way you come to me. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We're going to sit down and reason together. Yeah. Romans 8, 36. I'm going to read, expound, and test the match. You're going to sit down. I'm just excited. Take your time, Pastor. Now don't tell me that. <laughs> y'all know y'all can't tell the preacher take your time and they have four clothes. And... <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. What was eight? 36. <clears throat> and again, I just want to encourage the people of God on this morning. When you have a sign, word of the Lord. I'm going to try to stay in my Joel Osteen voice. <laughs> so that we won't be here all day. Amen. We honor Elder Ware. Amen. Amen. Some of the things that God allowed to happen to us in 2018, if he 
would not have allowed it. None of us. Some of us would have never turned down our plates. Some of us would have never got in God's presence. And if the truth be told, what happened to us in 2018 caused us to be a better us. Yeah. Okay. I watch the saints of the Most High God come in here on Sundays. Can I say this? I watched from, from January 1 now until December the 16th. And some of you are not the same that you was in January 1. Yeah. Most of us have been hit from every aspect of life. Uh, most of us have testimonies that we would have never thought would have been a part of our testimony in 2018. Some of us have experienced sickness that we never would have thought that God would have allowed to hit our bodies. Some of us have experienced relationship issues that we were at the point of just throwing in the tower, almost at the point of getting divorced, almost at the point of saying this ain't even friendships. Because at some point of life, the enemy understands if I can just divide them in this season, then what I want to do in the kingdom, it will not take place. That's what he think. So as I begin to read this scripture, the Bible says, yeah, in all things, we are more than conquerors. That simply means what you're dealing with, God has already equipped you what you need to fight in this battle. All right, all right. Some of you didn't even realize what you was equipped with until your back was against the wall. Some of you didn't even realize that you really had a fight in you too and you couldn't even call your pastor, you could call the prophet, you could call the apostle, but then you had to go to God for yourself. Let me say this, sometimes God will remove your crutches in order for you really to stand. He'll strengthen your fear, he'll strengthen your legs, because as long as you got crutches, that means you are dependent upon something to help you continue to walk. Amen. That's the 1240. Thank you, Lord. That's our 1240. Amen. We just give God praise. But he understands as long as you got something to depend on, you will never solely depend upon him. So what God has to do, as, as Pastor began to say last week, he will remove your obstacles. He will remove your crutches. He will remove your props because he understands in this season, I need them to fold, totally focus and depend on me. Can I help you? If the Bible says that God would have no other God before him, that simply means who you are putting God in place, he's getting ready to move them. This is why I say, whatever you're doing, don't say, well, I can't do it in front of pastor. Because that means you give me more reverence than you do God. Because if you can do it in front of anybody else, that still means God sees you. So don't put my life in harm's way saying that you can't do it in front of me. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I may rebuke you, but you can do it. So as I begin to ride the church, I begin to listen to Again, Brian Courtney Wilson. He some kind of way always take me yes. to a place. Yes. Can I help this house? A lot of times that a lot of things that have happened in 2018, it was meant for you to win. It was never intended for you to lose anything. Some of us, what God has disconnected from us was never intended to go with you into your next. We still trying to hold on to people, places, and situations that God never intended for you to hold on to. This is why your fight is great. As I begin to listen to the apostle today, if, if, if the truth be told, it's not even about your will, but it's about the will of God. Yes. I begin to even go back, I reminisce. Tell somebody, I reminisce. I reminisce. I'm going to try to say in my Joel Osteen voice, I won't be a pillow. Yeah. I reminisce over 2018. There were times in 2018 I looked and didn't see what was prophesied to me. I looked and didn't see what was told to me in regards to what God was going to do in my life. But tell somebody, it was at the end of the year that God began to perform all the miracles. Tell somebody, I don't care when God do it as long as he do it. He said, yay in all things, we are more than conquerors. Can I help this house? That means anything that God has allowed to hit your life, that simply means he has already equipped you to handle it. Most of us trying to quit over situations that you know that if it had not been for God, that the enemy would have done more than just took your car. He would took more than your house. He would took more than just your money. I told you, it's not about material stuff that the enemy wants, but the enemy wants your life. The enemy understands if I can put them in the grave, then what the assignment on their life was for my kingdom, it won't be accomplished. But tell somebody, if you die and go to the grave, God will use your children. So most of us, the testimony be like me. I'm going to tell my own self. I used to always say, God, it don't take all this to 
be anointed. It don't take all this. You ain't got to take me through all this. And because can I help you? Folks see your adversity. And the first thing they'll do, they'll get on the telephone and begin to tell somebody whatever did that she done did something that God is angry. She going through because of what she done did. And, and begin to really seek 
the face of God. Because let me say this. All this could have been resolved two years ago had we came together, got in the face of God, and began to ask God, what is really going on? No, the enemy us and I can just keep them divided. Well, I'm shifting this entire family. They'll never get there. Oh this is what he, do to, he does to ministries. He understands that I can keep this clip on this yeah. side, mad with the leader, and I can yeah. get this side.
can y'all help me? Can y'all talk to her? Because ain't nothing else I can say. Every time I look at her, I cry. I just, I can't take this. You know, because this ain't my daughter. I mean, blah, blah, blah. I, I just was in a pickle.
hoodies over her head in the big sweatpants and tennis shoes. So I can accept that. She still looks like a little dude. So I'm going to show me. I'm going to do it. I just keep praying. Then all of a sudden, I saw in a nice little shirt, some jeans, and some heels. I got even excited. She started throwing on some hoops and an ear to big hoop. I said, oh, God, you doing it. Then she started putting on a little makeup on her face. I said, oh, yes, Lord. Then when she showed up, got bold and had her little shirt, her little cut off shirt. I said, wait a minute now. <laughs> Oh, no. 
said. So the Bible says, nothing will be able to separate me from the love of God. It may look like I don't love God. It may sound like I don't love God. It may appear like I don't love God. But tell somebody, nothing will be able to change my weakness in this season. Oh, 